Okay, so um, I'm not used to seeing an audience because I'm usually behind a microphone, so bear with me a little bit here. So this is indeed a talk on uh, fake news, and I first want to say that in many ways, the, the term fake news has changed bigly. <laughs> it, it used to mean uh, something that was just a fabrication you found online, and right now it's being thrown around by people who just decide they don't like what the news is telling them. Um, I don't know about you, but I have relatives on Facebook who post stories and I'm like, uh, Aunt Tilda, that's not her real name, but I'm trying to protect the naive here. Um, no, it isn't true, Michelle Obama is not a transgender man. Seriously, this is, this is one of those things floating around on there. And Muslim nurses uh, aren't refusing to wash their hands. But this, these are the kinds of stories that first I saw and I'm like, what is going on? And then the election happened. And shortly after that, the group of us at NPR who do tech were all talking about this phenomenon. And we decided we were going to follow one story and see who wrote it. And here I'm going to show you this. Um, FBI agent suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. Now. This story is completely false. But if you are somebody who lives in a world in which the Clintons kill all of their rivals, which is, a, there is a world of people who truly, truly believe this, this story rings true when you go and you share it on Facebook. And, you know, it even looks kind of like a real newspaper. There's, you know, careers, advertising, all these kinds of things. You know, in, in another version of this, you can even see it has horoscopes in this newspaper. Um, so this particular story caught our attention because it actually ended up trending on Facebook. It got over half a million views on Facebook, and we wanted to know where it came from. Now, a lot of people heard, have probably heard that some of the fake news was coming from Macedonia. So I did not know if when we went to trace this, I would end up on a plane to Macedonia. I did not. The story in many ways turned out to be surprising, but I think it will tell us something about this whole phenomena. And I feel like I'm coming after all these like happy speakers. So bear with me, this isn't necessarily a happy story, but you folks are techies and maybe you can help solve the problem. So, right? So the first thing I did was I looked to see who owned the domain name. Lo and behold, it was anonymous. It was registered anonymously, and I discovered there's actually a whole world of people making money off of registering domain names anonymously. We can only imagine where that leads to. Um, I'll give you sort of a little bit of a deeper dive of what happened next. I, you know, covering journalism, covering technology, but not necessarily knowing how to do everything, I found a guy, nice New Zealand guy named John Jansen, who helped me sort of scrape the internet. And he went and he started looking. It was a WordPress. It was created using WordPress. And he found the first entry and a handle, let Texas secede. <laughs> and he started looking around. And there were other sites with this same handle. And he began to look around. And eventually, he found that all these sites linked to one server on Amazon. And they all have the same advertising tag. So it meant somebody was following all these sites, obviously, to make money. Eventually, he found an email and a name. And the name was Justin Kohler. And I thought, this must be a joke, because he's got Jest in his name, right? Um, it wasn't. And we found that he was the founder and CEO of a company called Disinfo Media. <laughs> and we found he was living outside of Los Angeles and that he had an office just outside of Los Angeles. So I drove down there with my producer, and we go to the office, and of course, it's a post office box. But his house was right around the corner. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to do something, because I am an audio person, I'm going to play, hopefully this will all work, I'm going to play audio of us arriving at his house, and this is what aired on our podcast, Planet Money. So. Hopefully this works. With the minivan, all right. So he's got a minivan. It's a one-story home, kind of a beach bungalow home. 
And there's a palm tree in the front lawn because, hey, this is Southern California. There's an American flag, so um, you may be a patriot. So, all right, we're going to give it a shot now. So we get out of the car. I, I'm a little nervous because it's clearly somebody's home. Hi there. Hi. Looking for Justin Kohler? Why? Um, wanted to ask him something? Okay. Um, had a story that I'm wondering if you wrote. No. You didn't write it? No. Uh, I'm a, just for, so you know, I'm a reporter with NPR. Mm -hmm. And um, we were looking online and um, through a lot of tracing, uh, discovered that disinformation media was the uh, owner of several websites that, uh, you know, such as the national report.net. Right. Sorry, guys. I want to tell you. Nothing. Good day. That's nothing. nothing new. All right. All right. Thank you. But Laura, that was totally him. Oh, I'm sure it was him. We actually even checked the mailman happened to be going by and we said, does Justin Kohler live there? And he confirmed he does indeed. So we were sure it was him. So that was uh, uh, Robert Smith from Planet Money who co-hosted the podcast with me about this. Um, we did leave an email and a phone number and uh, about an hour and a half later, he had second thoughts. This is Justin Kohler. Um, and he wrote me the strangest email in this process, really the strangest email I've ever gotten. He said, I have long been a fan of NPR. And although people in your position, actual journalists, may not appreciate what I have done, I do believe we share similar interest in protecting the credibility of the traditional news outlets <laughs> who are now, due to the rise of social media, threatened by any idiot with a blog, myself included. <laughs> so he did agree to talk. And it is a very weird story in his case, but it will ultimately come down to money. He started this, he said, because he wanted to sort of poke fun at the alt-right echo chambers, where, in fact, stories like the Hillary, you know, Hillary Clinton, you know, kills her adversaries were floating around. And so it was kind of a joke for him, and he wanted to point this out. And under an anonymous name, he had occasionally spoken with news media before, but had never identified himself. Um, and I want to show you just a few of the sites he had. Um, these are just a few of them. He had many more. He was kind of a godfather of fake news. And I want to, sh I want to explain something that I thought was interesting to understand, that it, his idea of what to do had evolved. You'll, you'll notice that, you know, we had drudgereport.com.co, washingtonpost.com.co. Those were his early ones because he thought people would mistakenly end up there, but he then got sued for copyright and trademark infringement, so he stopped with that. He eventually evolved to the Denver Guardian site because he thought that was the next wave in fake news, which is you find something that sounds really real, and then you put it up there. But I think it's important to understand that this stuff evolves along with how we use the internet and what the laws do. Um, so, by the way, he also said that left-wing fake news never did as well as right-wing fake news. <laughs> and there's, there's actually uh, uh, something behind that. There was a study out of Stanford that said um, that fa those fake news favoring Trump had been shared a total of 30 million times on Facebook. Those favoring Clinton were shared 8 million. So, there's something to that. Um, and he also gave some insight, and I'm running out of time here. I don't want to go over, but I want to play this clip, th this next clip of tape. Um, because he was, Google started to crack down on putting advertising on these sites, and that was a good thing, and his sites got spotted. But then, this is what happened as soon as, like literally the next day. There are literally hundreds of ad networks, um, literally hundreds of them. Um, early last week, I just, my inbox was just filled every day with people, because they knew that Facebook was, or Google, excuse me, was cracking down. Um, hundreds of people wanting to work uh, with my sites. So, you know, and he told me he was making between ten and $30,000 a month off of these sites. So while this may have started out as a joke, it ended up being real money. And, you know, I'm here to ask you brilliant tech minds, we need to figure this out. I think, I think some of this is education. I think we need young people to know how to ask about where did something come from? I think, though, that Facebook should take some responsibility here. Yeah. 
Facebook is where most of it is happening. And now it's about 47% of people are getting news from Facebook, of Americans. So it's incredibly important. And I think, I really do believe this is undermining our democracy. We cannot continue to live in a world where people have facts and alternate facts. And, you know, as a journalist, I have dedicated my life. I get it wrong sometimes. Yes, I make mistakes, but that is not the same thing as fake news. The other thing is we need to come up with a better name. I don't know if it's going to be fantasy news or whatever, but fake news, it, it just, the word has lost its meaning. So, so help us solve this problem. And um, thank you so much for, for listening to me and my little tale.